morning. Good morning, Sherry Stevens. Good morning. Elise. Sir. I am forwarding you an email from Cresha. Can you add her? She's the Branson uh, Dio, Dofi. And uh, I told her we would add her to our email roster so she can get notified of all the trainings to share with their agents and stuff. Okay. So I'm sending you that. Right Cresha. Miss Cresha. All right. Sorry, I'm a little late getting on this morning. I was visiting with Jim Trowbridge and talking to him about the Keller Williams command listing presentation that's available to everybody. We're gonna be going over that Friday. Uh, if you haven't gotten in there and seen what you can do to customize your listing presentation through the designs platform, uh, you need to go play around with it. That way you'll have questions for me uh, on Friday, Lynn. No, just kidding, not just Lynn. Hey, Lynn. Um, but yeah, we, we wanna have everybody uh, go check that out if you want to. Designs part of your command, and we're going to cover the listing and buyer presentations. It's super neat. There's tons of customizable information. So, mm. great way to get your numbers going. We're going to give everybody a few minutes to get on here this morning. Um, this is our last week of every morning 9 a.m. Zooms. Uh, obviously, we're going to continue to train, but uh, next week we're going to be doing Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Monday will be contracts. Uh, we'll be going over contracts with Connie and, and uh, making sure everybody's brushed up on their contract education and some of the top 10 things we see people miss in compliance that we need to cover. Um, one of the big ones is there's a spot where you're supposed to put a percentage or a dollar sign. And if we don't watch out, one of you guys is going to get paid $7 instead of 7%. So we need to make sure that doesn't happen to anybody. Um, also on Wednesday, we had such a good response yesterday from the listings mastermind Wednesday, we're going to do listing best practices part two, and we're going to dig a little deeper into how to get them, right? So we touched on that yesterday, and I got some feedback that said, hey, we want to know more. We, what about this? What about that? So, you know, listings, masterminds always go great. And like I said yesterday, we could have talked for two hours. I mean, it, the, the time just flies. So please mark your calendars. Join us next Wednesday. And on Friday, as always, we'll be doing Take Command of Your Business, where we dive into command and all the wonderful things it'll do to help grow our business. And we've seen a lot of exciting there, exciting things last uh, couple Fridays there. Um, we'll also be sharing out Branson is doing some stuff on Tuesdays and Thursdays and they've been joining us and they've been so kind to invite our group to join some of their trainings. So we're going to share out those links if you want to jump in on those. And the week after starts Bold. So if you haven't signed up for Bold Pivot and uh, if you've been living under a rock and haven't heard me talk about it or seen the emails about it or been bugged about it, let me just reiterate, guys, it's huge. Last year, I think agents that took bold did 14 transactions over seven weeks. Um, go on YouTube, watch some of the videos about it if you're curious. You know, a lot of agents find that they take bold, they do more transactions from the bold class than most agents do in a year. So if you want to take your business to the next level, uh, this is a great opportunity and it's only $99. We have 30 scholarships available. I know we've used up about 10 of those, so we should have about 20 left. Um, but please, 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 either sign up for bold or if you need help with it reach out to amy or myself and we'll get you on the list uh the same in branson they're giving away 30 scholarships i don't know how many they have left uh, also i've got a few spots for agent mark keller williams so if you've got someone that you're friends with and you say, hey i know you're struggling how about you come join us for bold uh, you can really take your business to the next level tell them we promise we won't try to recruit them we'll just pour into them let them see the value for themselves and uh, they can reach out to me uh, and get them a scholarship. That goes through Branson agents too. If, if you know somebody down there, get them in touch with me or Carolyn or Monica or somebody and we'll, we'll get them a scholarship and, and get them. So, Where's he at? Make the Ozarks? Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm in the Ozarks, yes ma'am. So gonna go ahead and hit the mute all here so that we can get everybody on. Oh, the birthday boy. Matt Ford, everybody just joined us. For those of you that don't know, Matt turned 50 yesterday. It was very exciting. And wow. <laughs> a few years before that, but there's getting a lot of gray here, my kids keep telling me. Happy birthday, Matt. How old were you yesterday? Thanks, my man. 41. 
I am I am not a uh, I'm not a female, so you can't ask me my my age. I yeah. am now 40, 41 years young. Well, we we're really uh, we hope you had a wonderful birthday, brother, and we're we're uh, all happy for you. We've decided to forego singing happy birthday on the Zoom, although I, I like to think that would be nice, but uh, we won't. I did fun. receive a voicemail yesterday with a full happy birthday song. Interesting, nice. first time, first time ever. Nice. Did you see my message? I really need you to let Pam win some of that furniture. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can't afford to buy it, so I need you to put her in the drawing. <laughs> I'll put her in the drawing. I'll rig it. Oops, <laughs> did I say that out loud? <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. So, all right. Well, we are, um, Alicia will sing for all of us. Anita's volunteering Alicia to sing happy birthday to Matt. <laughs> hey, in all seriousness, I love every one of you guys. You guys are amazing people. Four Seasons Group, KW, Branson, y'all are freaking awesome. Well, we love you too, buddy. And we're, we're glad you're with us. We're glad to have you as part of our uh, leadership and, and, uh, you do a lot for us. I got to tell you guys, Matt, since the day I got here, has helped me so much, been so supportive, coached me, taught me, advised me. I, I could not have made it through my first few months without having Matt and Mike to talk to. So uh, he's huge. And, and if you don't know Matt Ford, get to know him. Send him a referral. He'll send you a referral. Do business together. Uh, he, he runs a high-level team and a high-level operation. We're proud to be in business with him. Love you guys. Love you, Martin. All right, all right. That's enough about Matt. I'm gonna mute. I'm going to mute that guy. So today what we're going to talk about is something that uh, is a, a class I always love to talk about. And of course, you may find with me, I love to talk about real estate all the time. Um, we've got Sherry Stevens with us this morning, and she's going to talk about the big why. And we talked a little bit last week on one of the classes about things like a one, three, five, and your one is your big why, your big rock, right? And so your big why is what's your most important goal? Are you working for your kids, your family, your future? You know, what is your big why? And, and, and if you know that, you can be led to a big life. And um, Sherry Stevens has a great big why and has a great big life and runs a great team. And so I'm excited to have her here to talk about this uh, this morning. I'm going to shut up and get out of the way and turn it over to Sherry. So good morning, Sherry. Good morning. How are you guys today? I'm good. Good. Well, I am. I don't know why I'm nervous about this today. I talk to people all the time, but today, for whatever reason, I woke up just kind of anxious. Um, so it's interesting that um, sometimes the teacher is the best student. Um, isn't that what they say? Something like that, because you're teaching yourself as you're as you're leading the class, and that's really my thing today. Um, because I don't know that I have a huge why other than obviously family, um, business. Um, I'm a workaholic. Anybody that knows me knows that. So just some transparency. So I wanted to talk about, and Martin, you guys, anybody jump in at any time, but living your big life now, because so many times I think we put it off. we maybe we don't know what our big why is. Um, we just do what we do. We roll through every day the same, like Groundhog Day, like Corona Day. Um, Corona Day, you know how that's been lately, like the Facebook ads that are saying like, it's blah, blah, blah day, blah, blah, blah day, whatever. You know, you don't even know what day of the week it is. So, but I want, what I hope that we get out of this is a sense of direction. Um, and if you're one of those people that you, Ever since you grew up, you knew what your big why was. I am, I am so excited for you. I haven't been that person, and that's okay too. So that's what I wanted to kind of talk about. So success looks different for everybody, right? Something that may be success to me may not be success to Matt, or may not be success to Angelina. So we all have to define what success looks like to us individually when we're on that journey to our big why. And I'm gonna to try to read all of this um, and share some things with you and I'll try to do it, my glasses are in the car. Um, so I may have to jump over to Sam's computer and grab his. <laughs> but, okay, so we are all at different places in our career and some of us have an idea where we're headed and some of us don't. Do we all agree with that? Yeah, I think I think we're all there. And I think um, so some have a savings account and a retirement plan. Some don't. And we can all agree that we can't live a big life until we have some things figured out. Right. We can live life. But can we live a big life if we don't 
know what direction we're headed. We need to start at the beginning. Um, a little bit about this class today. Some of this I have, um, I can't remember what Matt and Andy call it, the road, the, uh, the rip off and duplicated method, the road method. Um, so a lot of that is, that's what this is today. Do you know who Dave Ramsey is, anybody? He's the nationally syndicated radio host. He is um, a personal um, finance expert. And so a lot of this is coming from him. He, he runs a multi-million dollar company. He had lots of money um, in his 20s, became a, a millionaire, market tanked, lost it all, and had to rebuild. And through that, um, he believes that God allowed did not cause that but because of that he has learned that now his business and he is a multimillionaire, but he doesn't measure success by that he measures success by how many people's lives he's changing and i thought that was so appropriate because that's a constant conversation <clears throat> that we have in our office especially if carolyn crispin's ever around you will hear her say that how many lives are you changing? How many people are you touching? And just interesting to me that that has really come full circle with Keller Williams. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the baby steps. And Martin, I'm gonna share my screen if I can. I wanna talk about the baby steps and we will get to living your big why, but right now I think we need to focus on at the beginning, how to get there. Um, so I'm gonna try this and hopefully it will work. Can you guys see that? No, ma'am. Hmm. Click share screen down at the bottom and it should give you some options of what screen you wanna share. Yep, I did that. I have the save share or the share screen and then I had that already in place. And then click share again. They're there at the bottom of the box. Oh, gotcha. Okay, sorry about that. Try that. Okay, I don't know if that works. I can't see what you guys see. No, it's not. It's not sure. Okay. You go down to the bottom and when you click share, a little white box will pop up and ask you which one, you select one and then to the bottom right, there'll be a blue button that says share. Okay, well, I don't know why I can't see it now. But anyway, okay, well, back to it. Okay, so this I will send to you guys if you want it. Okay. But basically, these are the baby steps. It's a baby step program and basically what it's designed to do is help you get out of debt know which order to do that in, how to build wealth, success, um, save for retirement, and then live and give. And so that is that in a nutshell. But before you even start the program, the mindset is you have to commit to never borrowing for anything again. And that's a big, that's a big thing. Um, you can't if you're if you are in a relationship you need to make sure you're on the same page with your spouse because trust me that money is um can be an issue with any relationship but it talks about that's the first not even the first that's before the first that's like the pre idea um the first step after you get to that point the first step is saving a thousand dollar emergency fund and we should all have that and I know that some days it's really hard to think about even being able to have a thousand dollar emergency fund. And when you do get it there, it's not for, oh, I, oh, I saw a sale item. I'm going to go grab that and I'm going to put that money back. Okay. So it's not that it's strictly there for emergencies. Um, at this point, you're chopping up your credit cards which is kind of scary for some people <laughs> and I get it. Um, but that's also the step where you would get health insurance, life insurance, and those types of things. Number two, baby step number two would be debt snowball. So if you're in a situation where you have a lot of credit card debt or different types of debt, that he actually, Dave Ramsey has the program, um, Financial Peace University and the Total Money Makeover. If you have not taken those classes, I highly recommend them if you're trying to get yourself out of debt. 
they, um, he will take you through a journey. And we always think, at least I think in my mind, if I have a high dollar, there we go. Can you guys see that? I don't know. I can see it now. If you have um, a high interest credit card, they, he will tell you <clears throat> that's not necessarily the one that you pay off first. Okay. You're going to pay off your smallest one. And the idea to it is to get the momentum going. Um, once you start doing that and you get one out of the way, then you take that extra money and put it on the next one and so on. And so in that way, you start knocking out all of your debt. The third baby step is having three to six months worth of savings in um, your savings account. Um, three months, three to six months of expenses, um, rather, in your savings account. That's a fully funded emergency account. And with coronavirus going on, I don't know um, how many had that, how many didn't. But I can tell you if you had any money in savings and maybe weren't selling or your spouse got laid off or you're a single parent or whatever that case is, when all of this happened, it really spoke to me about making sure that we do have money set aside because none of us saw this coming. Gary's been preaching about the shift as long as I've been at Keller Williams. Um, and I really did think that the shift would be technology. And I think it has been. However, I think it's being spurred. It's going to be spurred a lot more by coronavirus. And um, I think that's a really, that's a really great point, Sherry. And, and, you know, Pam and I were talking last night, watching the news and she said, you know, what would you have done if, if uh, back in October, November, you know, when you were interviewing for this job, if, if you'd have known the pandemic's coming and I said, well, the first, you know, and, and, and I followed the principles. And so I have savings and things like that. But I said, the first thing I would have done was, was cut more expenses and save more money. Right. And, uh, and so, you know, crisis always teaches these things. I actually read an article today where at least after those of us that lived through the 2008 financial crisis, we're better. It said, you know, we're better prepared. We're not in great shape, but people did learn some lessons there. And I, you know, just these first few having an emergency fund, having expenses. I mean, if you, if you haven't learned it before this time right now should be teaching you because it, it could end. One of the things I did, and I don't know that everybody, but the first thing I did was up when this started going down, I started upping my savings and cutting expenses and upping my savings because, Hey, it could last a long time. And while we're still making money and a lot of agents are closing deals, you need to be shaving expenses and saving that money. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great point. Thank you. Um, the baby step number four, after you have your fully fund, your fully funded emergency account, um, the next step in the process is to start contributing 15% of your paycheck to your retirement. <clears throat> Some people will do that in stocks and bonds, mutual funds, all of those things they'll play in the market. Um, some people put it all in real estate. Whatever your retirement plan is, you should contribute 15%. Um, that would be typically in the, in the stock market and mutual funds, that kind of thing. You have to determine that for yourself, what your retirement plan is going to look like. And there are plenty of financial um, planners around here that will gladly spend the time with you if you need to start looking into that. Um, my other recommendation on that would be talk to two or three people and see what their ideas are and find somebody that has a, um, that will teach you, that's a teacher at heart and not somebody that's just going to tell you what they think that you need to do, but somebody that's going to explain to you why you do it. Um, step number five would be saving for your kid's college fund. And some of us have kids at home, some of us don't. Um, so you just have to look at that step for yourself. And then step number six is pay off your house early, which would be fantastic if we could all, all of us realtors have paid for homes, wouldn't that be nice? And then number seven is live like no one else so that you can live like no one else. And so at the beginning, that might be tough. You may not have the nicest car. You may not have all of the luxury things you think you need. But in the, at the end of the day, truly, I think we need to take a look at what happiness is. And um, we want to be in a position, at least I want to be in a position that I'm able to give. That's really 
to me, that's probably the biggest part of living your big life now is being able to give to people. And so many people through this, I know, um, thankfully our lives haven't been hindered a whole lot unless we're not selling real estate. But I think in general, um, if your family hasn't been personally touched by this um, and maybe you're still working, maybe it's not as relevant as it is to some others. But having those steps in place will really help us and then get us on to being able to share. The more positive we can stay, the more impact I think we will have on, or at least positive impact we will have on people. I do want to say um, I love my job. Anybody that knows me, when you get into real estate and you find something you love, it just becomes part of your identity, part of who you are. Um, and I will say to all of us, it doesn't mean you like it every day. Okay. It's, it's like, I love my kids. You know, I love my kids. Doesn't mean I like everything they do every single day, but it's a, it's a choice. Um, it's also a privilege, not a right. Okay. So I think, I think being humble is, is a big part of this. If you don't know what your big why is, I would say don't be so hard on yourself. We go to bold classes, we go to other classes and um, everybody's talking about their big why and it's always been kind of a struggle, <clears throat> at least for me to put it into words, what it is. And so I would say if you don't exactly know what your big why is, don't be so hard on yourself um, because it will change. Matt Ford, has your why changed since you started real estate, since you started Keller? It seems like, yes, but I'm not sure if it has actually changed or if it's actually gotten more focused. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And at times I think it, and maybe it is that it changes through the focus and we get zeroed in. Um, we need to stay positive. And especially in the world that we live in with social media, um, I was through the pandemic, I have been really limiting my news intake uh, to like 10 minutes a day, because if you stay focused on that, I see Ellen going, yep. If you stay focused on that, you get into fear. And if you get into fear, it will paralyze you. And if that happens, you're really not being good to um, the people around you, even to your own team, to yourself, because fear is paralyzing. And so for me, it's been, I, I want to stay informed as far as knowing what to do and be smart and yet not so, I don't want to be overwhelmed with fear with it. So that's just my thing. Some people sit in front of the TV. I'm okay with that too. Whatever works for you. I think we need to search um, day to day, we always see the obvious, right? We, everything we look at, we see all of the obvious things, but we have to take a step back and look for something that may not be so obvious. And I heard as, um, a comic uh, comedian, he was on TV one night and he was talking about what makes him different, sets him apart from the other comedians. If there's 10 comedians in the room, and they're all looking at a three-legged dog. What makes the sky different than everybody else? And he said, that's easy. He said, they look at what they see. I look for what I don't see. He said, so they're, they're out there making jokes about the dog and I'm making jokes about the leg, which I thought that was kind of cool because in real estate, sometimes we have to do that too. We can see the obvious, but pain versus pleasure, all of those things, we have to look be, over, um, behind the physical a little bit and bring their attention or our attention back to what we don't see, right? So Matt Ford, maybe your plan is to be retired by the time you're, I don't know, 50. How about that? Since Martin thinks you're already there, you know. should be really close. So you retired yesterday? <laughs> but um, so maybe that's your plan. And right now, maybe for the day-to-day -day operations, you don't see every single thing, but you have that goal. And in doing that, I guarantee that that why is not just for you. 
I guarantee it's about Anna. It's about your kids, future grandkids, your in-laws, your family, bettering those around you. Matt, do you feel like those are, um, is that part of your why? Do those things impact your big why? And can you give during this time while you're moving to your why? Absolutely. It's all part of my why. Um, and, and you're right. I think uh, as you age, Martin, uh, no, I'm not 50. Uh, but as I approach that big 5-0, yeah, you do. And, and you become so much more focused than when you were 25 and, you know, the world was before you and the years were before you. You definitely become more synergized uh, around what is important to you. And it's all about family for me. It's all about family and uh, my in-laws, like you said, my, my kids, definitely. Yeah. So Mark Twain said that the two most important days are the day that you're born and the day you figure out why. I thought that was pretty profound for this training. Um, why does it matter when you figure out what your purpose is? Connie, why do you think that's important? Well, it, it's always important. You have to know why you're here and where you're going and, and what you want to accomplish in your lifetime. Um, I envy all you 41-year-olds uh, knowing now what you know. I wish I'd have known it um, when I was 40. Uh, but there's a, there's a purpose for everything. And uh, my big, big word is always attitude. Uh, I think your attitude um, is what, what focuses on where you're going and what you're going to do. So attitude, staying positive is always a big thing for me. Yeah, I agree. I think um, if you all ever feel like me when you're going through life, you ever feel like you fall short. Okay, we've set these big goals and we've tried to teach our team and we've tried to guide people and we've done this and then things come and knock us back a little bit. Um, the one bold law, and here's a plug for bold, if you all haven't taken it, it will, I promise, if you will commit to it, it will change your business. It will change your life. It's not just about real estate. I've taken it four times. Um, so this is really, Martin and I didn't talk about this and he didn't give me permission to, to push bold, but it really, it honestly will change your life. Um, probably one of my favorite bold laws is change the way you look at things and the things you look at will change. And I use that in my personal life, my professional life, um, even in my spiritual life, some because it's it's amazing if we just take a step back and just change what we are seeing and just listen take a breath it it will change and so it's just interesting and it will change your perspective on how to handle real estate deals if you have that difficult agent on the other line and what's better than turning that negative into a positive because you're changing lives by doing that um you know, Sherry, I, first of all, I don't think you ever need my permission for anything. Um, <laughs> you, you definitely outrank me, but uh, I give everyone permission first to push bold anytime. And second, I, I want you to repeat that bold law to everybody because not only is it applicable when you're dealing with a tough deal or a tough client, but how about when you're in the middle of a pandemic and a weird yeah. situation, right? I mean, I, I want to commend everyone that's been on these zooms every morning and been pouring into your business because what we're doing is trying to keep our focus and and look at things in a way that says we can do business we can go on you know mm -hmm. you're not sticking your head in the sand and saying oh no real estate's over i'm never going to sell another house and and so you know repeat that repeat that bold law again so everybody gets it. so it is change the way you look at things and the things you look at will change. That's right. So if you got up this morning and you were looking at things like, oh no, the pandemic's going to take us all down. Hey, you need to change that. Right. And yeah. another one is another one. Another bold law I love is your sales eavesdrops on your thoughts. Right. Yes. So if you're thinking negative, you're thinking negative, your sales, they're eavesdropping on those thoughts. Don't, don't build yourself into believing that mm -hmm. this market is over and that we're all going to be living in cardboard boxes under the bridge. That's not how it is, right? So I love that you shared that this morning. It's so, 
one of the most applicable bold laws for our time. And, and, and I know Matt probably agrees, Connie, any, any one of us that have taken bold, there's been a lot of bold laws going through my head lately. I think we just, it's all about that. It's about really finding the positive and sharing it with people. Um, because I know that I do have clients uh, that are waitresses, waiters, they don't have a job and that's scary. And part of living our big life is what are we doing with what we do have? That's probably one of the biggest things to me is how can you be of help to them? And not only by picking up the phone and saying, how are you? But, and this was actually a little bit later in my notes here, but in order, when you're living your big life now, who wants to wait till the end and live it? We don't even know when the end is, right? All of our days are numbered. We don't know what those days are. So what we can do is we can live today. We can live that dream today headed to that future. And so one of the things that I asked myself last night when I was finishing preparing for this is if you were in a financial position, and hopefully we all are um, or will be, and a pandemic like this did happen, what if you were in a position, okay, your bills are paid, you have food. And what if you knew somebody that either didn't have food, couldn't pay their electric bill, couldn't put gas in their car, whatever those things are, are we willing to give to others? Because that is what changes lives. And I believe that's the purpose why we're all here is to change other people's lives. I don't believe that we're only put here for ourselves. I think it's it's about a bigger purpose than that. It's about giving what we can give to those around us so that they can give to those that are around them. And whether that be financial or love, some people don't have the finances, but they can smile. Or right now, social distance hugging, which is not for me. So when we get done with this, every single one of you is getting a big fat hug. If you don't want one, don't come near me. Just say in map board, you're not a hugger, but you're gonna get it anyway. So, but with all of that, seriously, with all of that, how much better would it be not only to be able to say, hey, let me pay your electric bill. How cool would it be to say, let me pay your rent for your house payment for a month? How about let me pay your house payment for a year? Or let me pay off your house. How cool would that be if we were all in that position that we could start living like that. And maybe today it's just $5. Maybe today it's a cup of coffee. But wherever you're at on that plan, it's living your big life now because it's where you're at in the moment. And that's where you start giving is from where you're at and it'll grow from there. And so, um, Martin, I appreciate you um, talking about that bold law because that honestly, and there's so many of them, but that one from probably the first bold class I ever took has meant something to me on a personal level. And I've used it so many times and it's, it just is true. Um, but you know what? I was thinking of the drunk monkey as you were talking. Because, yeah. You know, I know that someone on this call that just heard you say what you said about paying off a house or pay, thought, oh my gosh, you know, the drunk monkey told him, well, I could never do that, right? But that's just it. You could. Maybe, maybe you haven't set your goals big enough, but you absolutely mm -hmm. could. You could grow a big business and have a big why. Don't let your drunk monkey tell you you could never do that. You can do that much real estate. You can grow a business that level. Sorry, just had to, just had to get my plug. Anytime no, I feel the drunk monkey rolling in people's minds, I want to say don't listen to it. Yeah, no, I and I totally agree with that because that's – how many we all do that and i think that's um one of the other things i find remarkable is we all know who mother Teresa is right we all know who she is and what an amazing woman she was <clears throat> she had um yes i touched my face i'm so sorry <laughs> but i'm by myself it's okay um mother Teresa um actually She's just, she's totally inspiring. And I actually know somebody that knew her personally. And that's, that's one of those God moments when you're like, okay, why, why are you showing me this? But it's so cool. But one of the things that I was reading 
<clears throat> we all aspire probably to be like her because she was selfless. She was loving. She was compassionate beyond anything that I've ever seen personally. Um, she was, she was a Nobel Peace Prize winner, which I thought was so cool. And yet we saw what, we saw the exterior of what was portrayed of her by the media, right? Just like we do Trump, just like we do Martin on Zoom calls or whatever. Um, but she said in a letter that she had written to her friend that was a reverend, she said, Jesus has a special love for you. But as for me, the silence and the emptiness is so great. I look and I do not see. I listen and I do not hear. And that struck me on a personal level because all of us want to be the best that we can be. And I think all of us feel like sometimes we fall short of that. And yet when you, I think we're our own worst critics, at least I am. And so I can look at somebody like Ellen Tietmeyer and I can see all the greatness in her. And I can see Susan and Kate and Dave Hawmesser and, and all of these people that I'm seeing on the call. I can look at each of their lives and we see the, the, um, the calling that they have. And maybe we don't see it for ourselves, but we can look at it and see it on others. And I just thought, and I'm sorry guys, if I'm being corny or cheesy, but I think sometimes we just need to say, it's okay. Like I give my per myself permission to feel that way and take a step back. And you also have to count what you're doing right. That's, and that's all part of this being humble, having the gratitude, taking action, doing what we can do, being entrusted um, with little will lead to being entrusted with much. And I just encourage everybody, do what you can do. And maybe it's a cup of coffee. Maybe it's the pay it forward thing at Starbucks. You know, Maybe that's where we start. But whatever it is that you can do, that's living your big life. It's giving people what you can give to them. Um, I think with all of that, then we've talked about this. I know so many times at Keller, the wheel of life that we have, um, you know, where you have to look at yourself, your spiritual, your physical, um, your financial, there's a will and there's like seven spots on there. And you, you put on there where you feel like you're at at that moment. And then you draw a circle and you see which part of yourself is maybe off balance and we have to line that back out and again in all of those areas we can we can give so still all part of your big living your big life i have a great friend of mine and i asked him about his big why and i said what what do you do what you're doing and he said oh he said it's Trust me, I'm not one of those people. He said, I don't have some great answer. It's about the money for me. <laughs> and that's and that's okay too if it's about the money. Um, I know that he likes to make money and um, we all like to make money. Obviously, we're all working for a purpose. We, But I can also tell you that's not his, that may be his end game is to have enough money to retire on. But the other pieces of that, I can see him living his big life um, and helping people because I've seen him give up every dime of his commission, every dime, not keeping part of it, not um, giving, you know, just a portion. I've seen him give up all of his commission because it was the right thing to do for that particular person. And it wasn't that he had to. It wasn't like anything that got messed up. It was compassion. And that, again, another big part of why we want to live our big life now is, is compassion. Um, who needs help discovering what their big why is? I know a lot of people know what it is, but how many people need help finding out what it is? 
because we can we can help with that and Martin well, can help. probably so many Dave Hamaster definitely says him and, and you know I would guess there's a lot of people I was listening to Matt talk about his and he's talking about family and you know my big why up until I was 40 I was a single dad and I was raising Victoria and I was saving for a college and so everything I did was saving for a college keeping a roof over our head that was my one focus and now here I am a couple years later she's off to college um little brat got a scholarship so it turns out all that savings <laughs> I did was for nothing but that's fine you know whatever um the point is I went through a, a transition where my big why grew up and left home right and I'd imagine some of our agents are in the same boat and so it took me a couple years to realize that it's okay you know I, I felt guilty at first making me my big why right making right. saving for my retirement my big why and so sometimes I think we go through this. And I'm sure somebody on this call is feeling guilty because they think, well, you know, right now my big why is keeping a roof over my head or, or raising my children. And that's okay. You know, it, I know for me, I, I, it took me a little while to say, Hey, it's okay. You, you did this, you accomplished this big why now it's time to reset. Or if you're a, a Dan Bolin who retired from his pharmacy business and now he's building a new business, you know, he may not have the same um, big why as someone else, but I bet a lot of us on there, you know, Dave, Hamas, sir, you're going to have to jump on, Dave. We're not going to do it through text. You said you said you jumped in and said, me, you're struggling to find your big why. Tell us about how that feels. Oh, it's similar to you. Um, you know, I, I raised my daughter, and, you know, she's pretty well out of school. I'm done paying for that. And I've got my place, the lake, still got my home in St. Louis, and just not really sure what I'm trying to focus on. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my MAPS coach and Matt is, uh, for those, those of you who don't know, Matt's on his way to being a MAPS coach. He's one of the best coaches we have in our whole organization already, um, and he'll appreciate this. My MAPS coach had a hard time with me at first when I went through that transition because I'd say, well, I don't know. I don't really know what my big He'd say, well, is there a charity you want to donate to? Is, is there a, a cause that you, that you have a lot of love for in your heart? Maybe it's homeless vets. Maybe it's homeless pets. Maybe it's... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't know, out of work circus clowns. Is there something, you know, that's, that's really on your heart, Dave, that, that you would love to be able to say, man, I really contributed to, you know, I know um, some of our folks here work with Lanai, right? So maybe you'd love to be able to fund Lanai. Maybe you work with the food bank and you'd like to have no hungry people at the Lake of the Ozarks and no hungry people. Those can be your big whys as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, and I think Martin, one of those things, if I can add to that is there's, there's a, there's an underlying reason for everything we do. Uh, and when we talk about this, this why subject, it is so powerful. And I challenge each of you, uh, as Sharon and I have talked many times is dive deep into that. Why ask yourself three questions deep, the, the coach in me screams. So, uh, Dave, if I, if I can for just a second, let me sure. use you, okay? Let me use you. So, uh, Dave, obviously you became a, a real estate agent. What was it about real estate that, that, that really attracted you to it? Uh, you know, I started my career out in real estate, kind of went off in different directions, but, uh, you know, I've always liked it. I always just uh, feel like it's, <laughs> very real you know I, I don't know it's hard to explain what is it about real estate that makes you get out of bed every single day um you know i guess it's developing relationships i, I think uh connecting you know people um putting people together making a deal Dave, can we dive deeper into this? Are you okay with that in front of everybody? Sure. Okay. What is it about those relationships that is so important to you? Um, I guess I just feel like I always need to help people. How does that make you feel when you help people? That's that's what makes me feel good. Yeah. So we're 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 beginning to dive deeper and deeper. What what is really driving you guys? This is it's probably so empowering to go through these steps of self-identification and understanding what is truly getting you up every single day. And that is, that's where you find energy. Like 
it's so exciting when someone identifies truly. And like Martin said, maybe it is having the financial piece of, for me, honestly, it's, it's one of those things that if I can, if I can fund that life for my family, where we do not have a financial difficulty waking up every single day and promoting my, my retirement to where one day I can walk away and give something back to my family to where they can take this business and run with it. And it provides a generational type of, of opportunity that's empowering. And each and every one of us has the same type of big why behind them. Maybe you've not self-discovered it. It's okay. Like Sherry said, Sherry and I had a conversation in our training room one day and she, she's Sherry, if you don't mind me sharing this, is it okay? I'm open book. It's cool. Okay. I have so no clue what he's going to say. Said, <laughs> I really don't, I really don't know my, my big why. And it was right after bold, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and it's really a conversation of diving really deep into this. And, and you can even do a self-evaluation. Why, why am I doing this? Why do I wake up every day? What drives me? What motivates me? Um, you're, if, you, if you ask yourself those questions, you are going to dive so deep and get emotional with yourself. And if you don't have a coach, get a coach. Uh, oh my God, get a coach. I cannot promote coaching enough. It is, it is not an expense. It is an investment. It has changed every single person's life, business, and honestly, more so your personal life than, than even your business. So get a coach to help you identify some of these things. They've got transformational coaches. Mike Staten, he's on here somewhere. He's got a transformational coach. And that was one of the things he and I worked with was really focusing on transformational. So that's just my, my, my few cents is really dive deep into this question. Get real with yourself as to why you're getting out of bed every single day. What is it that drives you to help people? It's not just helping people. Uh, trust me. There's something deeper than just being a servant, I believe. Matt, I, I want to echo what you said. Guys, coaching, I, I'm, a, I'm a living proof of it. When I joined Keller Williams, I was just a regular agent um, coming from another brokerage. I ended up in the coaching program kind of by accident almost. Um, and had I not had a MAPS coach, I would have never grown the program I had or had the opportunities led me to, to be here with you guys today. I mean, I'm, I'm a product of MAPS mm -hmm. coaching. Um, I know right now they're giving a, a, some deals away. I think they're giving a month or two free if you sign up. Guys, anyone that's, that's spending $1,500 a month on Zillow leads for their business and you're getting a, uh, maybe you're getting $3,000 back. So you say, oh, I'm making 1500. You could invest in coaching and you could gain 60, 80, a hundred thousand dollars in your business. It, it could be the single best investment you could, you can make. Right. And I know that just about any agent you ask that's been in coaching, been in maps coaching would tell you, Hey, absolutely. Best thing I could have ever done for my business. I, I want to echo what Matt said. Mike has shared with me that his, transformational coaches helped him a lot. I know most of us have been in MAPS coaching um, at one time or another. If you're interested at all, reach out to me. Um, I'll get a MAPS person to give you a call. Reach out to Matt. We can get MAPS to give you a call. They will put you with the right coach. They let you, they offer a ton of other value from webinars, downloads. I mean, the coaching, the value now is just currently constantly being increased. So I just want to jump on what Matt said there and say, get a coach, get a coach now more than ever. And, and something else, that I was hearing and thinking as, as Matt was talking was, you know, let's be honest right now. How do, how do you feel right now at this moment? We're talking about mindset, but we know with all the pandemic, with all the economic struggles, all the stuff swirling around, it's only normal that we all feel a little, a little nervous. Right. And Matt said something a minute ago. He said, you know, my big why is <clears throat> getting to a point where there's never that financial risk for my family, where I don't have to worry about that. I think we can all agree on two things the market is going to return, right? We've all been through this. We know the world's not going to end. It will spin on. We will get through this. It may be some pain, but just like 2008, things will come back, right? And the other thing we know is this will happen again, right? History, those that don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. So if right now today you're feeling like, oh man, I, I really didn't prepare enough for this, then, then I want to challenge you guys to, to make that your big why, that the next time the downturn happens, you can say, well, okay, I'm not worried about anything, right? 
so that you don't feel the way you've been feeling through this process. If you don't like the way you've been feeling through this process, through this, through the things we're going through right now, then the simplest way to change that is to not repeat the same steps we had in the past. So, you know, great opportunity right now to change your mindset and say, today, I am going to start growing towards my big why, which is like Matt said, which is my family will never be at risk financially. That the world can shift, a pandemic can blow through, the economy can crash, and yeah, we might have to cut down to two Netflix subscriptions, or we might have to stop going out to dinner a few nights a week, but I will not feel that, that pit in the middle of my chest that says, oh man, will I make it through it? And let's be honest, we know that some of our fellow agents on this call are feeling that way, right? We know that somebody has that feeling in their chest, and man, I don't know if I'm going to make it through this. We can stop that. We can, we can cause you not to have that the next time by simply establishing your big why and making that your focus and your goal. So I just, what, when Matt said that, I said, man, what a great message. What a great big why right there. So thank you, Matt. All right. So as with so many of these really good Zooms, when we really start getting into it, um, we, we could go for hours. Um, I know we could all talk big why for hours. It's already 950. Anybody have any questions, thoughts, ahas? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a mat trick here and I'm going to be silent and wait for a couple of ahas. Hey, Martin, I just, I have a question and this is for everybody. Okay. If you could do one thing, if you, what is the one thing that you would do? And if you knew you couldn't fail, you would do it. What is that thing? Starting a nursing home, having, I mean, there are so many, there are so many things. So think about that just for a minute. If you could do something that you knew you wouldn't fail by doing it, what would it be? Well, mine would be bank robber, but I, I probably should have <laughs> someone else. Well, I'm in a positive sense. Oh, okay, all right, sorry. <laughs> Hey, Alicia, what would you do? Um, I would build with Carolyn a huge mega team that would just take this area by crazy storm, crazy storm. We're talking lots of really nice, good looking billboards. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Come on, somebody else. I, I bet Rick Servant has a big why. I saw it crawl up in his lap just a second ago on the screen. Looked like he had a grandkid there. Got to unmute you. They're noisy, so I apologize for that. Yeah, they came in to say hi. Um, no question about it. You know, I was listening very carefully when Sherry was talking and Matt and Martin really struck a chord with me. I, I um, obviously, Tiffany and I have a big family. Six children, 13 grandchildren. 14. And 14. <laughs> on, one more. He's correcting me. Uh, they can be a big why for anybody, right? Um, but what she doesn't know is that my big why is to, um, to provide the security for everybody in that, much like what Matt said, right? Uh, getting into real estate has allowed me to make it more so than ever before, make a difference in people's lives. And that's a big why. Um, before selling iron, selling machine tools, making money, uh, that's all great. But what we do, we serve a very important part in the world and uh, we make a difference in many people's lives. And that provides me, it puts me closer to God and provides me with a, with a, a security that I can make a difference. And that to me is my big why. I love that, awesome. Rick. Thank you for sharing. That's it. And you know what? I love that security. Security for his family, security for his grandkids. You know, we don't talk about it much, and I'm, I'm not going to dive in hard on you, but guys, if you haven't learned about our profit share program, if you haven't learned how to help us grow, and this is a time when we grow, that's willable two generations. There are family trusts that agents set up that those agents have now passed on and their kids and their grandkids are benefiting from the profit share that they helped build. So, you know, one of the things that Keller Williams is huge on is we want to help you build passive income, not just not just um, uh, profit share. But if you're not watching 
wealth building with Mark King on the Facebook. Go, go join that group because we want to help our agents not just sell a lot of real estate, but build true wealth and security that they can generational wealth, right? Generational wealth. If that's not your big why, believe that you don't let your drunk monkey tell you you can't. There, there are people that their families are receiving hundreds of thousands of dollars every year. They've already passed on. They're getting hundreds of thousands of dollars for their grandkids. You don't think that would fund those grandkids college? You don't think, you know, how'd you like to pay for that kind of education? So I love that Rick brought up, hey, security for not just his, his wife, but his six kids and his 13, I mean, 14 grandkids, right? So absolutely. Um, Dan Bolin. And Martin, in. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to add to that, you know, it's the one investment that you get a return on that costs you zero dollars. Yes, so you can build a passive income and it does not cost you one cent to start that process. And it's really the foundation of what Gary Keller started this company on was giving back to the agents. That's the whole foundation of Keller Williams, giving back to the agents and profit shares how he does it. So it takes zero investment. All it takes is a conversation with somebody about, hey, you really need to see what's going on at Keller Williams because we are more than a real estate company. And I don't mean this to be a sales pitch, but with the subject being what Sherry's talking about today, there's a difference in having a job and having a purpose. And uh, we all have different purposes and we all have different reasons for like Matt said, doing what we do. But um, I didn't get it at first when I uh, you know, started with this company and I didn't share with that many people. I was wrapped up in my world and how I was changing my life and my team's life, but it can be much bigger than that because now my purpose is to change everybody I come in contact with in this company for the better. So it takes zero investment. You don't have to worry about the stock market going up and down. It takes zero dollars. You're not writing a check. Um, so it's definitely something that can change everybody on this call's life. Yeah, no, I agree. And that's a great point. Zero investment to yield potentially unlimited returns, guys. And, you know, they, they pay me to help you do that. I'll, I'll help you. I'll go on calls. I'll go on uh, appointments. You can tee them up. Absolutely. You know, it, it's, uh, it's part of it. And that's a great conversation to have with your fellow agents is, hey, what's your broker doing to help you never pay them to sell real estate? What are they pouring into you? Are they focusing on God, then family, then business? I mean, ask a friend, ask one friend that you're friends with outside of the, uh, at the board, and I'll bet you will get a response. They say, wow, really? So that's a huge, thank you, Carolyn. That's a great point. Anyone else want to share anything else? Dan wanted to say his big why is helping his special needs child create a better life. That's right. Sometimes we've got family members that are struggling and we can take care of them. Tina wants to fund a good life for her and her family that she doesn't need a vacation from. So there you go. Sometimes we just, that's a good big why too. Absolutely. Martin, I love what you said um, earlier this week um, when our, our competitor sent out some stuff. You said, don't tell anybody else's story. And that's what that's just so true. Just tell your story. When you tell people what Keller Williams has done for you, and I, I say it all the time, it, it literally has, has changed my life. Um, and, uh, when you tell that story, you're not really focusing on, you know, the, the profit share or whatever that looks like. Um, and you have the opportunity to help change someone else's life the way Keller Williams has for you. Then, then you get, you get a thank you from Keller Williams for doing that, for helping change someone else's life. So just, I would just encourage you guys to focus on telling your story and don't worry about what anybody else is doing. That's right. And, and you know what? That's true. Enlisting appointments, buyer consults, talking to other agents. Just tell your story, guys. Rise above. We're the number one real estate company in the world. And you know what number one does not do? Number one doesn't worry about what number two is doing. Number one looks ahead. All right. So you guys keep looking forward. I want to thank Sherry, Matt, Jordan, Alicia, everybody that chimed in today. Carolyn, thank you for, for popping in. Um, we're hey, really grateful. Hey Martin, can I just can I can I give you just one closing thought that mm -hmm. I think sums all of this up? Yes, ma'am. And it um, is from Suzanne Kyra, and it says, "Living big is a mindset of living with abundance." I like that. That's all it is. Living big, living your big life. It's just a mindset, and and then following through. It's not on what we have or don't have, but it's on what we can share with the world. Absolutely. That's a great, you know what? That is a great ending thought. Thank you so much, Sherry, for pouring in. Uh, you always come from such a, a place of heart 
and love for all our agents. Thank you for, for everything you do for us. Um, we appreciate everyone for being on here. I want to encourage you all, please encourage your fellow agents to dive into the training. Please share bold with someone, get signed up for it, um, and continue to pray for your fellow agents in our country. We will get through this. We will see you tomorrow morning, same bat time, same bat station. Y'all have a good one.